everybody, I'm Devin Howard. Thanks for checking in with me here on The Fumble. Before I get into the top NBA stars who never played college basketball, do me a favor and click subscribe and then tap that notification bell so you never miss an update from us. March Madness is upon us, everyone. The games are bound to be just as exciting as the scandal so present in the league. I think it's common knowledge to say that the NCAA has its fair share of corruption. Players like LeBron, Kuzma, and Ben Simmons have all been pretty vocal about the problems in the system. System. The biggest one is obviously that the players don't get paid even though they're responsible for bringing the universities huge sums of money. The problem has gotten so bad that the NBA is trying to find an alternative for athletes who are trying to go pro. People are suggesting that they open up an NBA G League for high school stars or even repealing the age limit for the draft so that players can enter the league straight out of their senior year. There are plenty of all-star players who have skipped the college courses and gone straight to professional basketball proving that the players don't need the NCAA as much as the NCAA needs them. So let's dive into some of the top players who ditched university, and then we'll also count down some standout one-and-done players who just attended college for two or three semesters. Let's start off by talking about some of the most legendary players in the NBA who never stepped foot on a college campus. Our first athlete is Kobe Bryant. Bryant started making a name for himself in high school when he gained national recognition on his basketball team. Team. Naturally, he was attracting the attention of college recruiters like Duke, Michigan, and North Carolina, but opted instead to enter the NBA draft. Kobe was following in the footsteps of Kevin Garnett, who also went straight from high school to playing professionally. With all the awards Kobe won as a high school player, it's no wonder he decided to skip university. Like Kobe, Garnett was an outstanding high school player, but his decision to not play in the NCAA was due in large part to his low ACT scores, which prevented him from meeting freshman eligibility requirements. So he entered into the draft and was drafted with the fifth overall pick by the Timberwolves, which began his successful career as a professional player, no college necessary. Tracy McGrady can also be added to this list. His path to pro was different than most high school students, though. He wasn't a widely known athlete, but he did make a name for himself at the Adidas Boot Camp, which kick-started his journey to the NBA. He was selected as the ninth overall pick by the Toronto Raptors in the 90s draft, and although he received little playing time his first season, he ended up proving his worth and began his career as a game-changing NBA legend. Finally, we have to talk about the GOAT himself, LeBron James. He's been playing basketball since he was 10 years old and, of course, killed it in high school and was later selected as the first overall pick of the 2003 NBA draft by the Cavs. During his time there, he set an NBA record for most points scored by a prep-to-pro player in his debut performance and was later named Rookie of the Year. Next up, we've got Kristaps Porzingis. This guy is one of the NBA's most exciting young players. He's 23 years old and already an all-star, and he skipped playing college ball. The seven-foot-one athlete was born in Latvia and played professionally when he was still a teenager. At 17, he moved to Spain to play for their youth team and then worked his way up to the big team in Spain's ACB League. His sheer skill and size made him a target for scouts as he rose the ranks in Spanish basketball and eventually the NBA. His start in New York was a little rocky. He was met with boos from the crowd on draft night, but now he's a beloved player and he achieved his superstar status without the help of a college team. Up next is Lou Williams. This guy is the best example of how a high school player can grow in the NBA system. He was a standout player in his high school league and momentarily thought about playing college ball, but the structure of it didn't make sense to him. In the past, he said, with college basketball, the coach is the star and you get up at 5.30 a.m. to run before class. That was never appealing to me. I didn't even care where I was drafted. He went number 45 to the 76ers. He didn't play much as a rookie, so he was sent to the D-League the following year and then was called back to the 76ers roster. I like William's story because he didn't burst out of high school as a top performing player. Instead, he had to build up to NBA status and now he's a legend. All right, we've got to talk about Tyson Chandler, the NBA vet whose name first appeared on the map when he was just 12 years old and known for being able to dunk like a pro. Check out this video of him dunking over a kid's head when they were we're all in middle school. Ah! 
straight out of high school, the skilled athlete was scooped up by the Clippers and then immediately traded to the Bulls. Now he's back in his hometown and on the Lakers, continuing his 17 year long career right back where he started it. Moving on, let's talk about Marc Gasol, another NBA star who never went to college. He was born and raised in Barcelona, Spain, but moved to Tennessee after his older brother joined the Memphis Grizzlies. He played high school basketball and averaged 26 points, 13 rebounds, and six blocks per game. Upon finishing high school, he decided to move back to his home country of Spain to play in the ACB League. He signed with a team there and was named the league's most valuable player. Ultimately, he returned to the States where he was the 48th overall pick for the Lakers in the 2007 draft. A year later, he was traded to the Grizzlies and signed with them, setting a franchise rookie record for field goal percentage in a season. He was just following in his brother's lead when he decided to skip going to university. Pau Gasol led the way by playing professionally in Spain straight out of high school. Once he got to the league, Pau averaged 17.6 points per game, and in his 17 seasons in the league, he has never averaged less than 10 points and 7 rebounds per game. He got a nickname as Kobe's sidekick, but I think it's obvious he was capable of much more than just being a sidekick. The two brothers conveniently sidestepped the NCAA, and they're definitely better off having done that. One year of college basketball would have been useless for Amare Stoudemire. His high school tape speaks for itself. At one point, Amare did commit to going to the University of Memphis, but he later pulled out and declared for the NBA draft. He was the ninth pick of the NBA draft for the Phoenix Suns, and he was the only high school player to be taken that year in the first round. The legendary ball player dropped 38 points on the Timberwolves, the highest score by a prep to pro athlete until that record was beat the following year by a young LeBron James. He was selected to the rookie squad in the rookie challenge and also won the NBA's Rookie of the Year award beating out the likes of Yao Ming and becoming the first player out of high school to win the award. A true success story. Speaking of Yao Ming, he's another player who never needed to go the academic route, but when you hear about his childhood, you sort of wish he had been able to have that kind of normal adolescent experience. By the time Yao was eight, he underwent intense, repetitive, militaristic training with coaches who were harsh and disciplinarian. Rumor has it that the athlete was fed hormones and supplements from childhood to make him taller, so from there he played in children's leagues and would practice for 10 hours a day. Although his strenuous childhood was rough, he ended up making it big in the NBA. He was the first ever international player to ever be selected first overall without having previously played US college basketball. He went on to play a decade in the NBA, was inducted into the Hall of Fame until an injury cut his basketball career short. Another international basketball bulldozer is Tony Parker, the son of Tony Parker Sr senior, also a professional basketball player. The French athlete never explored his scholastic potential because he was too busy playing ball. He grew up around basketball, attending his dad's games throughout his childhood, and wound up playing professionally in Paris. In the summer of 2000, he went to the Nike Hoop Summit in the US, and his performance in the game caused a recruiting war among colleges. The next year, he entered the 2001 NBA Draft and became a star for the San Antonio Spurs, who already have displayed a knack for finding and developing international talent. The Frenchman has been named to six NBA All-Star Games, three All-NBA Second Teams, and an All-NBA Third Team. He was also the 2007 NBA Finals MVP, so he's done pretty well even without a college degree. Tony is in his 18th year of his NBA career, and things still seem to be going pretty smoothly. Next up, let's talk about Dwight Howard. Dwight's been serious about basketball since he was nine years old, and despite his large frame, he was a fierce point guard in the early stages of his basketball career. He carried his high school teams to victory, which helped him decide to forego college and enter the 2004 NBA draft instead. Dwight has said he was inspired to do this partly because of his idol, Kevin Garnett, who had done the same thing nearly 10 years earlier. Howard was selected first overall by the Orlando Magic. Despite the team's losing streak, Howard made a huge impact. He finished his rookie season with 12 points and 10 rebounds and set several NBA records in the process. He became the youngest player in NBA history 
history to average a double-double in the regular season, among other titles. In 2005, he was unanimously selected to the All-Rookie Team. Dwight's immediate success out of high school was incredible. Now imagine if he had delayed that for a year to play NCAA basketball, risking serious injury. I'm normally a huge proponent of going to college, but in this case, I'm glad Dwight didn't. Moving on to the next NBA player on our list is Dirk Nowitzki. The German-born athlete was surrounded by professional basketball in his youth. His mother was a pro player and his dad was a handball player at an international level. Dirk had an unconventional basketball career. He started playing when he was in his early teens. At 15, he attracted the attention of an international basketball star who coached him privately two or three times a week. Dirk's practice consisted of a lot of shooting and passing exercises with no weight training or tactical drills. His coach also encouraged him to play music and read books so that he was a well-rounded person. Dirk made so much progress in the first year that he joined the DJK professional team in Germany and the next year entered the NBA draft. He passed up many college offers and went straight into the league as a prep to pro player, but his rise to success wasn't as smooth as other players we've mentioned. The start of the NBA season was delayed by the 98-99 NBA lockout and since he was in limbo, he returned to Germany to keep playing for the DJK team. Once the NBA season did start, he struggled. He felt overpowered by more athletic NBA forwards and was intimidated by them. But by his second season, Dirk started to come around and was chosen for the NBA All-Star three-point shootout. He was one of the tallest players to ever participate. One of his greatest accomplishments was when he led the 2011 Mavericks past a loaded Heat super team during their physical prime. Dirk's teammates were mediocre, so this victory was unexpected. In 2017, he was sixth all-time in points, largely due to his trademarked fadeaway jump shot that's been virtually unguardable. There are a ton of other players who chose to go straight to the pros, but there are just as many who decided to play college basketball for one year. Let's talk about some of those guys before wrapping up this video. Kevin Durant is our first one and dunner. Before KD, no freshman had been named consensus first team All-American since LSU's Chris Jackson in 1989. Durant earned that honor and others by playing an incredible game. As a college player, he averaged 25.8 points, 11.1 rebounds, 1.9 steals, and 1.9 blocks, plus a 40% mark from three-point range. KD is a versatile player whose amazing NBA career started off in college. We've also got Anthony Davis, who played for the University of Kentucky team. During his single NCAA season, he claimed six National Player of the Year awards. As a freshman, his 185 blocked shots established a national record, so you know he was a killer on the court. We've also got to discuss Kevin Love, who played for the UCLA basketball team, something fans from his home state of Oregon couldn't forgive. Somehow, his phone number was leaked before he went to college in Los Angeles and they left death threats on his voicemail. Knowing the drama he faced, Love's All-American status at the end of his first season seemed well-deserved. Now, as we're coming up on the summer draft, we have to think of what other high school stars are out there who won't be able to go the prep to pro route due to new rules and regulations. I'm also thinking about Zion Williamson, the star Duke player who injured himself recently after falling in a game. The knockout athlete has been out for several games recovering. A lot of fans are blaming the NCAA for working their athletes too hard without paying them. There have been talks about the NBA revising their draft system, ending the one and done era, but as to when those changes will happen, that's still all up in the air. Personally, I think it's exciting to see an athlete go to the NBA straight out of high school. All right, Fumble fans, who is your favorite prep to pro player? Let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. I'm Devin Howard for the Fumble, and I'll catch you next time.